since The Daily Show finally hired a black host, we can properly celebrate Martin Luther King Day by asking New Yorkers how they celebrate his legacy. Shut up! Don't interrupt me on Martin Luther King Day. That ain't cool. So, let's do this. Do y'all know what today is? Uh, we're lost. <laughs> we're lost day? Do you know what day it is today? It's Monday. What you do today? Well, today we just woke we up. We just checked out of our hotel. Checked so we out of our hotel. Much. We're going to go get coffee and we're going to walk around. So, which one of those celebrates Martin Luther King Day? Well, none of none of what we've talked about so far. <laughs> yes, 232 yes, push ups yes. for Martin. <laughs> so, this ain't reparations, but this is enough. <laughs> that's right. Give me one hand once. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Hey, what y'all doing to celebrate MLK? Came to New York. Came to New York. That's it. That's all y'all gonna do? Saw some shows, ate some food, did some shopping. All right, I'm gonna come back to y'all on Juneteenth. And y'all better have done better. Don't you like when he, like, you know, refused to move to the back of the bus? Mm hmm. I can remember snippets through the, the world news. Of he didn't refuse, that was Rosa Parks. Was it? Name a famous MLK quote. Uh, I have a dream. I have a dream. I have a dream. And. What does he say after that? I'm not sure. Name a famous uh, MLK quote. Oh, Besides, I have, I have a dream. Besides, I have a dream. Um. I will pay you uh -oh. do one million dollars <laughs> if you can tell me something else that Martin Luther King said. He told his children he loved them. <laughs> and, oh, nice. Woo! Millionaire! Yeah. <laughs> so, Lady, you, you do name. not know. <laughs> <laughs> he said to his children. Can, can we Google it? No! <laughs> I have a dream that one day, that's all I got. I have a dream that one day white people will actually know what's in that damn speech. Okay, just name five black people. Eddie Murphy. That's the only black person you know? Oh, Eddie Murphy. Byron Leftwich. Who the f is Byron Leftwich? Byron Leftwich is in the NFL as an offensive line coach. Don't nobody know him. <laughs> You're Madam just making up names Madam. now. So how you uh, celebrate Martin Luther King? Um, not too sure. So that's what he died for, man? For you just to be out here just not doing nothing on this day? Nah, I'm just kidding. Uh, you can do whatever you want, man. You black. <laughs> We're going to go see the Lion King. OK. It's got King in the Bye. title. <laughs> I mean, that's as close as you can get. I'll take it. The freedom and liberty to go about and do what we want to do, right. that's our celebration. See, that's, right. that's a quote from a black woman yeah. right there. That's right. She the earned freedom that. Freedom and the liberty. She right. earned right. that. To do what we want to do. That's right. I'm just. Birthday. It's your birthday. birthday. How, how old are you? I'm 50. What? Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Black don't crack. It don't crack. You still need lotion, though. <laughs> you still lotion. If Martin Luther King were here, where do you think he would stand on the government shutdown? I think he would stand inside because it's too damn cold. <laughs> Why is Martin Luther King Day on the coldest day of the year? I mean, why can't we celebrate him in July and we can, you know, march outside and have a cookout? Yeah, but then it wouldn't be on his birthday. Oh, so a black man can't have two birthdays? It's 2019, Trevor. I thought we'd move past this. What? I didn't know there was a civil rights... Anyway, never mind. What... Okay, while you're indoors today, what do you think and what are you remembering about Dr. King's legacy? You know what I want to remember? The real Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, not the whitewashed, hallmark version. Because every year people talk about the same stuff. The I Have a Dream speech, the March on Washington, how he had the voice of a Scooby-Doo ghost. <laughs> I have a dream. <laughs> and I would have gotten away with it too if it weren't for those meddling kids. <laughs> but the real Dr. King did not fit in any box. White moderates think he would have been on their side, but he thought they were worse for the civil rights movement than the Klan. And mattress stores are out here having MLK Day sales, but Dr. King was anti-capitalist. And even though he was a reverend and a man of God, he allegedly had a whole bunch of affairs. Whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, hold on. Even if that's true, I mean, that he, that he had affairs, isn't it disrespectful to mention that on his birthday? I don't think so. It's part of his legacy. A reminder that our heroes aren't perfect, they're people. And I'm not being disrespectful. <laughs> Just the opposite. MLK was out there getting it. <laughs> and probably still 
still could. I mean, if he showed up on my Bumble, I'd take him to the mountaintop in the valley low. I've never thought of MLK on Bumble. Well, he wouldn't be on Tinder. That man had class. <laughs> if everyone knew that fighting for civil rights could get you some, a lot more people would fight for equality, equal pay, voting rights, and whoever can stop black people from getting shot by the police will f tonight, okay? <laughs> All right. Now, first you get a million in the streets, then you get a million in the sheets. Don't say slow, everybody. MLK Day is a special day for America, and it's a special day for me as someone who has been mistaken for Martin Luther King Jr. many times. <laughs> But as we get further and further away from his life, it's easy to forget what he was really about. Which means sometimes people celebrate him in a really f***ed up way. So today, I'd like to show y'all some of my favorite MLK f***ed ups, like this one. The holiday didn't go as planned for some today. A business in Duluth, Minnesota created controversy when promoting a sale in honor of the civil rights leader. The sign posted at the shop read, MLK Day Sale, 25% off everything black but the owner says it was just misinterpreted. 25% off everything black. He was black, he was proud, he looked good. We were celebrating that. Are you serious? For MLK Day, 25% off for black clothes? What it should be is 100% off for black people. Free at last, free at last, pants, tops, and coats are free at last. Yeah, Roy, you know what, what makes it worse? is that if you read Dr. King's speeches, you'll see that he, like, he was opposed to consumerism and wasteful capitalism. That's right. Celebrating MLK Day with a sale is like commemorating Samuel L. Jackson Day by whispering. <laughs> That's not what the man stands for. It's not like in the middle of his mountaintop speech, Dr. King just broke off and like, remember me with savings too insane to be believed. I might not get to that store with you, but my eyes have seen the power of the discount. Come on, Coretta, let's roll. You know, it, it, actually, it actually is unfortunate because it seems like some white people are out of touch with Dr. King's legacy. Oh, it's not just a white thing. In fact, Dr. King might actually be proud that on his special day, people of all colors and backgrounds have been f***ing up. As we pause to honor Dr. King this year, a flyer for a local event that bears his image is causing quite a stir. But as NBC 25's Walter Smith tells us right now, the party is now canceled. The party promoters, nowhere to be found. This poster has a lot of people shaking their heads in disgust. It shows Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. wearing a gold chain promoting a party called Freedom to Twerk. It was supposed to take place at this club, but it's been canceled. The owner says he's disgusted and there'll be no twerking here. There will be no twerking here? Sound like Gandalf in a Tyler Perry movie. There will be no twerking here! And then, you know, the strippers fly all over the place. <laughs> Also, how are you going to Photoshop Dr. King with gold chains to try and make him look cool? He was already cool. Look at, these, look at these real pictures of Dr. King from back in the day. Look at him playing pool in a suit. In a civil rights, fresh from a march. That shot's so cool, it doesn't matter if he misses. And here he is making the library look cool. Standing in front of books like they stacks of money. But this, this, this is my favorite Martin Luther King. Wearing sunglasses inside. <laughs> Trevor, he could have taken that call in private, but he left the door open for the haters. <laughs> but maybe, maybe the most popular activity on MLK Day is using his legacy to push your own agenda, and no one has done it in a more interesting fashion than this guy. I believe that Gun Appreciation Day honors the legacy of Dr. King. And the truth is, I think Martin Luther King would agree with me if we were alive today, that if African Americans had been given the right to keep and bear arms from day one of, of the country's founding, perhaps slavery might not have been a chapter in our history. Okay, okay, hold up. I'm pretty sure on Dr. King's list of priorities, Giving slaves guns comes way below 
not having slaves in the first place. The logic, the logic makes no sense. This makes no sense. How would you do that? Like, do, do you think the slave owners would have just had a little chit chat? Well, well, should we set them free? Oh no, don't set them free. Let's make it interesting. Give them shotguns. <laughs> now, I will say this. If slaves did have guns, the movie Roots would have only been 15 minutes long. <laughs> Your name is Toby, or oh, whatever you want us to call you. It's cool with you. Cool, okay, okay. So, so Roy, we've seen people mess it up, you know, with sales or, you know, with their own agendas, but what is the proper way to celebrate Dr. King's legacy? Listen, man, it's simple. MLK was for racial equality, economic justice, and stood against the exploitation of the poor. And he did so because he knew that one day our great nation would rise above bigotry, injustice, and poverty, and on that day, my friends, there will be twerking for everyone, <laughs> everywhere. So many times, politicians bring up, or people who will have an agenda bring up Dr. King. They quote the dream speech. They, they do the same thing, okay? He want us to live in a colorblind society where our kids can go to school together. They quote this one part, but they don't quote the part about him being against the Vietnam War. They don't say uh, his, his uh, speech, his letter from Birmingham jail, where he talks about the white moderate and nobody asks themselves, am I the white moderate? Right. So nobody, everybody now is pro King and not racist, but nobody's reading King now for how to be anti-racist. It's interesting that you say that because th there was a specific article or piece of it that, that connected with me, written by you uh, in this, and it was specifically about the idea of Martin Luther King and his assassination. And you say here, in the official story told to children, King's assassination is the transformational tragedy in a victorious struggle to overcome. But in the true accounting, his assassination was one of a host of reactionary assaults by a country against the revolution, and those assaults were astonishingly successful. Yeah. That's an interesting point of view, because many people feel like Martin Luther King being assassinated was the beginning of the great journey that got black people to where they needed to be, and you're arguing that it ended a revolution that was starting. How, how do you prove that, or why do you believe that? So I remember when I was in school, and I had a teacher who told me straight up, that the civil rights movement was victorious, that right. we won, that we, we won. And what I could never reconcile was how did we win if Dr. King was assassinated while protesting? How, how did we win the civil rights movement? How are we victorious if while protesting for higher wages for sanitation workers in Memphis, he was assassinated and right. his poor people's movement was derailed? So. I always want to revisit that point. So when I wrote that essay, I was listening to Nina Simone's song, Why the King of Love is Dead. She right. wrote it three days after he was assassinated. And he, she's talking about, will the country stand or fall? She's talking about a country that seemed then on the verge of an apocalypse. Right. And so I really wanted to go back to that moment and see how we get from that moment where, where you're talking about the end of the world, the black community in shambles and tears and, right. and, and unrest and riots, and how you go from there to here in 50 years and say we won. How does that happen? People would say, but Van, look at how much progress black people have made since Martin Luther King. Surely things have gotten better. Black people on the up in America. Well, uh, some studies are sh showing that that may not be the case. So we, we've got some studies out from the Economic Policy Institute that are saying that black wealth, black homeownership rates, segregation in schools haven't gone anywhere in 50 years. So, in so 50 years? In 50 years. So, so what are we talking about here? We're, talk, we're saying that the gap between blacks and whites now in terms of wealth is just so staggering that it's how do you even build policy to right. bridge that gap? Uh, education has risen, but our, our kids are now in schools that are as segregated as they were in 1970. So what are we talking about? Something that I, that I really connected with, and I guess because of South Africa's history and also because it is International Women's Day, is this beautiful quote in the, in the article. Women have been the backbone of the whole civil rights movement. This popular narrative of the civil rights movement too often relies on great men, the great men version of history. King, Malcolm X, Thurgood Marshall, uh, Stokely Carmichael, other names, you know, and it in ignores the importance of women who also organized and led the movement and shows how their contributions have been sidelined, hidden in plain sight. That is a powerful narrative that many people forget. And that is, Coretta Scott King wasn't just a sidekick. She wasn't just the woman at home. 
Why do you think it's so important to acknowledge these women and what were they instrumental in doing in, in many movements? Yeah, I learned a lot reading that essay from, from Jean Theo Harris. Um, she was talking about Coretta, Coretta Scott King, and how Martin's development politically came from conversation with Coretta. So a lot of what he was doing was sort of mansplaining Coretta, right? He was going out and saying, okay, she was against the Vietnam War years before he was. Wow. She, when they were courting each other and in, 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 uh, in when they were still dating, she was the one who was sort of giving him these economic ideas, passing him along text about what to read and how to learn and grow. So you look at, I mean, if you look at Coretta, Coretta Scott King, not just as King's help me, as someone who was an activist in her own right, right, you start looking at just all these other women in the movement who did so much. Uh, Rosa Parks, who was an operative. We're taught in school that she was a tired old lady who sat down. She was out there, she built the same organizing structures that actually King relied on when he was doing the boycotts. Wow. Those were built by black women against sexual assault. That's powerful. The same things, yeah. And so when you, when you look at these stories, how do you think it plays out because Martin Luther King exists in a place where some people use him to stage a protest and others go, we should use him to sell trucks in America. Um, everyone sees him in a different light. If Martin Luther King were around today from what you have read and what you've learned, like how happy do you think he would be? Would he think people have reached a mountaintop? I think from reading him, his thing was never being satisfied with where we are because there's always space. The mountaintop in that speech wasn't the place where we need to be in terms of race. The mountaintop was having the vision to see where we needed to go. And I think that vision was that the, the road is ever everlasting. Right. The moral arc of the universe is, is always bending right. towards justice. And we bend it. So I, I think King, would, he would be protesting Regardless of whatever situation is on the ground right now in America, he will be protesting because that's what he does. That's what an activist does. They were always agitating. And so that's what I want people to take away from the magazine is that his activism was always ag agitating, was always moving forward and progressing. And, and you see in the last year of his life before he was assassinated, right. he sat down and thought, how do I move this forward? And he came forward with the most ambitious program to fight poverty to fight militarism and to fight racism across the globe. And that was King.